Howdy go lovers, Derek here at Blue Cactus Dairy Goats. And we just left the ranch. It is day one of seven days of traveling across America delivering goats. That's right, seven days. For the next seven days, I'm gonna be living in this truck, pulling a trailer that has 19 baby goats in tow. 19 baby goats, seven days. This is a, a very big uh, undertaking to say the least. just crossed into New Mexico and you, on I-10 as soon as you get into New Mexico from Arizona kind of dumps you out on this uh, flat and the dust storms are usually blowing through here if you get any wind. I've been through here before and all this dusty stuff had water in it. But it's a really neat spot. Everything's just so flat for a while and you know and then it gets mountainous again but kind of a neat little area. So we are now rolling into the town of Hatch, New Mexico, the chilly capital of the world. Um, every year this town has a huge festival like September 1st and, and like everybody from Arizona, you know, like if anybody, if we know anybody that's coming through Hatch, New Mexico, you know, that's all anybody wants is you to bring them the Hatch Green Chilies. Um, that sign green chili roasting we accept credit cards but that's where uh the big hatch chilies come from is hatch new mexico and it's a big deal every fall everybody's roasting chilies you know uh if you're driving through our small town of benson arizona um there's guys you know pulled over either side or in tucson everywhere that you know people drive all the way here and buy chilies to take them back to Arizona and roast them and sell them and, 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 and you know desert folk just can't get enough of those chilies and a store like this come fall will just have chilies hanging everywhere Ristras there's all kinds of all kinds of neat little things going on in this town and this town is hopping during that festival in September it's a it's a neat place. So in case you're wondering if they're hot, they have milder flavors, but yeah, man, they are all hot. Um, you know, if you are a, if you're a Midwestern or something, this is burn your face off, Bill. I mean, it's a neat old town. Got some character. where I buy my chilies whenever I come through is that place. Of course, they don't have any fresh ones. I've also bought in chilies there. And I always stop at this gas station, so that's what we're going to do. Get some gas, get these goats some, uh, some food, give them a break. These goats have been sitting for about 45 minutes and everybody in the trailer has gotten up and started chewing their cud and you know trying to escape like this little bugger. Everybody's eating some hay. Everybody's doing great back here. Here's the, the ladies. Oh, easy there. Everybody's doing great up here. Everybody in the back of the truck here has uh, gotten up and eaten as well. Camo has been reluctant, the guy laying back, laying down back there in the corner, he's been reluctant to get up. I mean, he did get up, but I, I think he's afraid someone's gonna take his spot. So our goal for today is to go from Benson, Arizona to Monument, Colorado should take about 11 hours and 45 minutes. We are crossing the mighty Rio Grande River. 
which I believe we will cross again later today, maybe even a couple of times, but that's how it looks down here. Rio Grande. We are actually supposed to leave a couple of days ago, but that's kind of kind of my fault, uh, scheduling so many things back to back. Um, you know, not allowing enough time to get done the things that a guy needs to get done to be gone for as long as I'm going to be gone. But anyway, we had all of the goats loaded into the trailer um, yesterday. Yesterday or the day before, I don't know, it's all a blur. But uh, we put them all into the trailer and we were gonna leave that morning, but once we got them all in there, it just looked too crowded. Um, there were 10 bucklings in the back compartment of the trailer and nine does in the front, of which three does and four bucks still need uh, a bottle a day. So not only was it too crowded for all of them, it would have been a real nightmare to get get the ones out that I needed to bottle feed and not, you know, having anybody else escape. It, it just would have been a real nightmare. So um, we made the call pretty quickly once seeing them all in there that it's just too crowded and we couldn't leave that day. And we ran to town and got some wood and built that other box that's in the back now. Now, it didn't take all day to build that box or nothing, but... It, it, you know, it would have threw off the timing of everything. Um, you know, you got to get to uh, truck stops at a certain, you know, kind of earlier. They fill up and there's just nowhere for you to park. And then you're just kind of driving around the dark looking for, uh, you know, places to stay. And, and, and now, by doing it this way, we have the seven um, goats, three dolings and four bucklings, but seven that need bottle fed once a day. So they're in the box box in the bed of the truck so I can easily bottle feed them and then we all the goats that are over eight weeks old they need separated does and bucklings because it is possible that you know somebody could get pregnant so so we have six dolings in the first uh, stall there in the trailer and six bucklings in the back so rather than having nine and ten and then being overcrowded and in, in that whole bottle feeding mess now it's seven, six, and six, and it's it's a lot better. I mean, it's doable. This town coming up is called Truth or Consequences. And I used to think that was really cool and, uh, you know, Western sounded, you know, tell me the truth or face the consequences. And then uh, one day I stopped and was getting gas here and some lady told me it's, it was named after a game show that was back in the 70s or, you know, some, something like that, yeah, but it was named after a game show, Truth or Consequences. So, uh, anybody in the comments remember the game show way back in the day called Truth or Consequences? Uh, let us know. This town here was named after it.
taking our second big stop for the day in a beautiful Las Vegas, New Mexico. How are we doing, guys and girls? We doing all right back there? The wind just closed my door. I freaked out a little until I found the, my car keys are in my pocket, so we're good. It's been a long day, huh? Heck yeah, it is. I can feel it, too. I can feel it, too. How are we doing, ladies? Yeah, look at the camera. You can't eat it. You're standing in your food. Hi. Hi. And the dudes. How are we doing, Bucks? Yeah? They're happy to be nibbling. They're all real happy whenever I stop. Um, after the last stop, I drove about maybe one hour and I stopped at a rest area. And I just opened that side door up there. I just wanted to see if, put my hand in and feel how warm it was in here and it was fine. But anyway, because I, I kind of stopped, well not stopped quick, but I didn't, I didn't go to a gas station and get gas. So like they were still laying down and all the, the little dolings were just laying up against the front there and all the bucklings were laying here and the same thing was going on in that box they were all just laying down and cuddling and almost you know taking a nap so that's cool yes you're a pretty girl aren't you hi goat crazy goats I stayed the night in this parking lot the other night uh, on the way back from the Colorado run so I already knew about this place and it's a perfect stop I don't remember it might be four hours to our last last uh, stop for today Monument Colorado but it's nice when things are familiar Oh, yeah, you, wanna, oh, you cannot climb out of there. I'm just standing on that food bucket and they get up a little higher. Should get out of there, girl, so everybody else can eat. Not supposed to be up there. I said, I think camo knows how to un unlatch that. Hi. You're a pretty girl. So yeah, the, the GPS says it's three hours and 52 minutes to the next stop, which puts us there at 10 o'clock Colorado time. So, I'm going to have to close up the hatches here and get moving again because I want to get there. I want to make sure that I have a spot to sleep at one of those truck stops up there and they fill up early. Look at them eating the, the wood. <laughs> Hi, buddy. All right, story time. I know two ladies uh, about a decade ago, maybe longer, they were driving across the, uh, the country you know coming from like the Midwest to Arizona and it's a long drive and uh, you know they had been driving along and they were you know getting tired of the road and getting you know stressed out from being in the car and stuff and they're, they're driving through New Mexico and they see this sign that says Las Vegas so you know they get excited and they're like heck yeah let's go to Vegas let's do it girl let's let's go let's just get a room get cleaned up um, and let's let's do Vegas. So they, you know, they they find the turn the radio up and their spirits are up and their, you know, the whole mood of the the trip changes. And they they get off I-40 in New Mexico and they start heading north to Las Vegas. And it's probably like a two-hour drive 
from the from I-40 to there. And uh, anyway, they get to Las Vegas, and they either got to a gas station or a hotel, but they get it, you know, they finally get to Las Vegas, and they, they run in, and they ask the attendant there, uh, how much farther, how much farther to the strip? You know, and the, the, the attendant or whatever is looking around at the other one, and they start to, the attendant starts smirking, and they, they figured it out, and they, they tell these ladies, you know, like 800 miles to the Las Vegas Strip. You are in Las Vegas, New Mexico. And that's just hysterical. So the, the two ladies just spent the night in the hotel just kind of laughing at how, you know, how bad their situational awareness sucks. And But anyway, funny story, true story. I really do know two people that did that. That's, that's, uh... You know, it's an easy mistake. Who knew there was more than one Las Vegas? So that's funny, right? Two hours back to the highway, too. <laughs> but anyway, northern New Mexico. A lot of rangeland, distant mountains and mesas. Pretty neat. flat and mountainous which doesn't make any sense unless you're in New Mexico what a view huh what a view just incredible sun just dipped behind that cloud there and made a, uh, I don't know, made it look really neat. It's not raining over there, at least I don't think it is, but it sure does look neat. There's another mesa. So hopefully you can see that right there. There's pronghorn. Look, there's another one. I don't know if you saw that or not, but there's just been pronghorn or antelope, whatever you want to call them, just uh, along the side of the road. You know, I'd see 10 or 12 of them in a, in a group kind of kind of browsing, and before I could get the camera up, uh, you know, I'm flying past them. But they've just been all over the place. Home on the range. Where the deer and the antelope play all day Munching this free hay That grows from the rain I shouldn't have mentioned rain Cause now I feel kind of sad So right now, I just went through the little town of Raton, New Mexico Now we're gonna go up through these mountains up here I believe on the other side will be welcome to Colorado but the uh, the Sun is going down it's 640 my time 740 wherever we are time um, yeah neat little mountains covered in trees Sing a song about the heartland. Sing a song about my life. I just heard that song on the radio. He said, sing rain on the roof on a summer night. And I thought, man, I miss rain. I'm excited to get out on this trip. I'm gonna see a big chunk of, of America. And on the way back, I plan to, uh, go through a few states that we've uh, we've been kind of zillowing you know and uh, researching and I plan to get you know every little magazine and newspaper and stuff that I get maybe even talk to a couple realtors but that'll be on the way back so 
we are climbing through these mountains now, just north of Raton, New Mexico. A lot of elk crossing signs in this area. Man, it'd be horrendous to hit one of those. Once, uh, a few years back, me and the family were headed up to the Grand Canyon and we were north to Phoenix, south of Flagstaff somewhere, and there must have been, you know, five to seven elk dead on I-17 there. You know, just, there was enough of them left to tell they were elk, but, you know, it's just, what was weird about it is there were no wrecked vehicles. There was just all these dead animals in the road, and, and uh, I just thought that was weird. But, and just like that, you're in Colorado, steep grades, going down. Look at that stuff, man. Neat. Man, this booger's really going down fast. So the sun is going down. I'm still over two hours away from where we're going to stop tonight. But we're just going to keep on a truck until we get there. All right, goat lovers, we've made it to our destination for tonight, uh, Monument, Colorado, which is right where I was the other day. And uh, to those of you that are wondering, why didn't I just bring all these goats the other day? The answer is there wouldn't have been enough room and I wouldn't have been able to go to the goat show and my family needed me there for that, so. So here we go, the bucklings. They all got some new fresh dry bedding and they are just mowing down on some hay. And up there, the dolings. They've got the same thing going on. Lots of bedding, lots of hay, some fresh water, even though I got some dust in it. It'll be all right. And then up here, we got this crew. They're all eating, dry bedding. Everybody's looking happy. This, this fella here really wants out, but he's not gonna get out, not today. So of course it's gonna get really cold tonight. You know, uh, I think the low is 38 for where I'm at. And then these guys, of course, are not used to that. These boogers here in the trailer, I'm pretty sure they're gonna be just fine. They're all gonna be just fine, but these guys are gonna be warmer than these fellas perhaps, but I did bring kind of a plan B and C with me. So I'm about to screw this board here to the front of that thing. And then with the tailgate up, that's gonna pretty much box them in. If it were to start raining or get any colder than that, I have a tarp that I could put over it and, and that'll do. They'll be, they'll be just fine in the morning, but, but it's getting late guys. And uh, I got, you know, still some work to do. And then I gotta make my bed of course. and. So we're going to end it here. Thanks for watching, and we will see you tomorrow. <laughs>